Thank you. And now I'm very, I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Jonathan Rothberg, the founder of the 454 Life Sciences Corporation and really the guy responsible for this whole project. Thank you, Richard. Uh, and thanks to your colleagues at, at Baylor uh, that made this possible with us. I believe that uh, most personal quests start with personal motivation and my work on the personal genome sequence started with such a motivation. These are my uh, three beautiful children. Is this a laser pointer? And uh, the middle, Noah, and I was told for fairness, I have to say, by the way, this is my daughter, Alana, and this is my other daughter, Jordana. But uh, when Noah was born, he was rushed to the newborn intensive care unit, Blue. And I was upset, and I was mostly upset because we didn't know what was wrong. I was upset for a lack of information. And as a scientist that had worked in the fields of genetics and genomics, I said, well, why can't I have complete information on NOAA? Why can't I have NOAA's genome? Because if I had his genome, we would know with the physicians there what to worry about and what not to worry about. Well, that night uh, in the newborn intensive care unit, I noticed a computer magazine. And that computer magazine had a new chip from Intel for a microprocessor. And I was very, very familiar with the Human Genome Project, this 13 uh, a year project, this $3 billion project. And I was also aware, acutely aware, of the history of computers. And I know that they got smaller and cheaper and faster because of something known as Moore's Law. So that night, I, I literally had that vision, why can't we move sequencing to a chip? And if we could move sequencing to a chip, we could, just as your computers now in your pockets are more powerful than the computers that got us the Apollo program filling rooms, we would be able to sequence individuals uh, cheaply. The two concepts to enable it were first to do things in the miniature, conceptually very straightforward, and the second to get rid of all the upfront work. When you look at the Human Genome Project and you look at those 13 years, you realize it was only the last five years that there was intensive sequencing of pieces of DNA uh, to assemble. The first was getting a collection of 50 or so humans into a form that you can sequence. And that was done by putting piece by piece, 500 letters at a time out of these 3 billion letters, each piece into a separate bacteria, growing it up and harnessing it. And it took centers like Baylor with 200 people and centers around the world to have the robotics and the time and effort. So the second concept was we had to get rid of all of that upstream uh, prep. I had been uh, thinking about that and realized that what we had to do was we had to capture these things in a way that did not rely on any microorganism. We'd have to sequence on a chip and we'd have to do the entire thing in terms of prep and a test tube. Now, the first proof, and I think this is uh, pretty fitting today, that this technology worked, and we ended up calling this technology 454 sequencing, and I founded a company, and some of the scientists are here today that made it possible. You can go from a dream uh, to a product only with amazing individuals. The first thing we sequenced was a virus, a little virus. And when we sequenced that in 2003, we had two types of responses. The one that I paid attention to, Richard Gibbs, <laughs> this is going to be big, and the one I disregarded. It will never work for anything besides a virus. Before I go on and tell you about Jim's genome and that project, I want to spend a moment on the technology. One of the things that you should all know about molecular biologists is we have no new physics, we have no new math, we keep the rest of you out of our field by new vocabulary. <laughs> so the first thing we have to do is simply break up a genome into pieces. And each one of those pieces 
we would have to make millions of copies. That's what those bacteria were doing in the original Human Genome Project. And in our case, we chose to use droplets, literally water droplets in an emulsion. 